Good evening, Robert Scribbler. It is October 8th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm going to continue diving into this IPCC special report on 1.5 degrees Celsius warming and how the 1.5 degrees Celsius warming range is achievable according to IPCC if certain carbon emissions reduction pathways are pursued. And for this segment, I am going to talk about where we are now when it comes to global warming according to IPCC and how IPCC envisions a pathway to achieving 1.5 C warming and avoiding hitting two degrees Celsius warming and above. But before we get into that, I, I would like to talk just briefly about something that tends to occur. And, and, and it, it tends to be that people criticize scientists about their communication on climate change whenever there's a, a big report like this that comes out. In my opinion, uh, this tendency is, is a little silly. It, it, it's one thing to try and hone your own communication skills when it comes to communicating the impact of human-caused climate change and the urgency for action if you're a scientific communicator or a scientist. But it's another thing entirely to, to blame the lack of, of public understanding of climate change on scientists. In all honesty, scientists have been warning us about human-caused climate change since at least the 1980s and probably before, with alarm bells being sounded since the late 1980s. And if there is a blocker for this message, it's not scientists. It's the fossil fuel industry, which is engaged in a mass political and market marketing campaign to try and sow doubt in the public mind as to the impacts of human-caused climate change, as well as the solutions and the causes. Causes being primarily fossil fuel burning, solutions being primarily transitioning to non-carbon-based energy systems, primarily renewable energy. So whenever you know someone says, oh, well, you know, scientists need to commu commu uh, communicate better on human-caused climate change, remember this quote from Dr. Michael Mann actually it says much more about the impact of billions of dollars of fossil fuel interest and dark money invested in the most concerted disinformation campaign in history. But by all means, go on blaming the scientists. And I'll say, let's not blame the scientists. Let's put the blame where it belongs squarely at the feet of the fossil fuel industry. Now, getting into the IPCC report, uh, i just like to point out that the IPCC states that we have hit a major milestone. We are in a one degree Celsius world at this time. And it is worth noting that according to NASA GISS, the last three years now have, well, in, well 2016, 2017, and 2018 are all going to be in the range of 1.5 degrees Celsius or warmer with the five-year average in the range of about one degree Celsius, above 1850 to 1900 average, according to IPCC. And that this warming has been caused primarily by fossil fuel burning and other human activities, but primarily fossil fuel burning. The rate of increase now, according to IPCC, is around 0 0.2 degrees Celsius per decade, which is a bit of an acceleration uh, past decades had, had seen about 0 0.15 degrees Celsius rate of decadal warming. And IPCC puts the present trajectory hitting around 1.5 degrees Celsius uh, uh, decadal average by the late 2030s or early 2040s. According to IPCC, this warming would persist for centuries. However, warming according to IPCC, can be limited to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Uh, IPCC notes that present atmospheric greenhouse concentrations are 
are unlikely, according to IPCC, to cause greater than 1.5 degrees Celsius warming over the next two degrees, I'm sorry, two to three decades all by themselves. And, and this provides us with an opportunity to limit warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius by reaching and sustaining net zero carbon dioxide emissions and by cutting non-carbon dioxide emission radiative forcing as well. On lower timescales than multiple decades, net negative carbon dioxide emissions may be required to prevent further warming due to Earth system feedbacks. And so on the longer time scale than multiple decades, we'll, we'll probably need to somehow, to, to through various means, achieve net negative carbon emissions to, to limit warming to a 1.5 degrees Celsius range. And IPCC notes that though impacts on Earth's system itself have already been reserved on the Earth system itself, further climate change risks can be reduced by upscaling climate change mitigation, which is basically emissions cuts, cutting, cutting human fossil fuel and other related carbon emissions and through adaptation. So, so that's a, a basic assessment of the present situation according to IPCC. I'm gonna go ahead and just provide for you a little bit more description of the, the various scenarios that IPCC has outlined for limiting warming to the 1.5 degrees Celsius range. And these scenarios involve cutting human carbon emissions to net zero by 2055 by substantially reducing human car carbon emissions by 45% through 2030 and by reducing net non-CO2 radiative forcing from sources such as methane and nitrous oxide as well. And these various scenarios can be outlined in a color-coded fashion in this graph that we're looking at. And the, the graph includes hitting um, net zero in carbon dioxide emissions by 2055, but no reduction in other emissions such as, such as methane and nitrous oxide, showing a leveling off at, a, at, at very close to the two degrees Celsius range on that pathway. But if faster carbon dioxide emissions are achieved and other radiative forcing elements such as methane and nitrous oxide from human emissions are also rapidly reduced, we can hit the blue range here, which, which shows between a about a 1.6 and 1.1 uh, to 1.2 degree Celsius warming over the multi-decadal time frame of the 21st century. So IPCC is, is basically noting that if we rapidly reduce carbon emissions, that a 1.5 degree Celsius target is achievable. However, the window of opportunity for hitting this, this potential goal is about 12 years wide, and we need to see basically an immediate response from, from global governments and global communities and industries to, to build this pathway to rapid carbon emissions reductions and, and rapid heat trapping gas emissions reductions, both in the CO2 realm, as well as for methane and nitrous oxide, with CO2 being the primary driver, but these other greenhouse gases also showing contributions to the warming problem as well. So just an overview of the IPCC assessment Thank you for joining me. I'll be chatting with you soon in another video blog about this IPCC report as well. So this is part two. See you for part three. Thank you.